Hi, James Gurney here. I want to take you to Maine. Okay, we're at New Harbor on the Pemaquid Peninsula. And uh, from this upper dock here, overlooking where they unload the lobsters, I'm attracted to uh, the low tide view of this adjacent pier and the very dark tar covered pilings and the floating dock below it. And what I want to do is to try to capture this in watercolor and then gouache going from transparent to opaque. We have foggy conditions so everything's grayed down. So I open my watercolor sketchbook and start drawing with a water-soluble colored pencil. This will dissolve a little bit when I put washes over it, but still hold the lines. I'm measuring the distances between the pilings, trying to get the spacing right. While I'm drawing, I'm thinking about the colors and tones I'm gonna to put down. I want this to be kind of a rectangular yin-yang with a big dark area and a big light area. In this case, what I love about this is the large area of unified darks under those pilings and then the unified area of light in the distance uh, with just some contrast areas at the top of the adjacent dock. Because it's so humid, uh, nothing's going to dry very quickly. So when I lay down a wet wash, it'll stay wet and I can drop other colors into it and let those blend. Now dark as that is under the pier, I'm using no black. Instead I'm using a rowney blue, which is similar to Prussian blue, and terra rosa, which is a reddish brown color, raw sienna, which is a dull yellowish brown, and mixing those together to get my darks. Plus, of course, I'm using white. By now the original drawing is mostly covered up, or dissolved by the washes. So I'll find it all with the brush. But now that I've got the transparent areas worked out, I can start going to a little bit more opaque and start bringing in more white gouache. And that should be able to give me some ability to capture the uh, effects of the light areas, like the white painted things that are facing up and the tops of the boats, things like that. I'm about an hour and a half into it so far. Just working area by area, trying to pick out the elements of the scene that are most important. Certainly I want to get one of the boats in, but they don't spend much time at the dock. It only takes them about 10 minutes to unload their catch. This is the co-op dock and they work with a bunch of different fishermen but the elements that remain constant are the hoist, those crates, and there's that lobster trap set up on end with the white railing in front of it. Now the guys unload the lobsters kind of unceremoniously into their crates. They're either put into the lobster pound, which is underneath the dock, or carried right up onto the uh, wharf. As I look down, I realize that things that I thought were constant are changing. Things like the tide coming in is raising that lower dock up quite a lot. And the boats themselves just skip around like water skeeters. And as the tide comes in and out into New Harbor, all the boats bob on their moorings. It makes me realize that as a human being, I'm tied to the time frame that I'm aware of. So things like the movement of the boats is something that I don't notice unless I'm looking in time lapse. So if I want to paint a boat like this, I assume it's going to stay constant. But in reality, it's swinging a lot on its anchor chain. We broke for lunch to have a bowl of chowder. And all in all, this is about five hours of painting time. Okay, thanks for watching. You might want to check out my website or subscribe to my channel. 
and then here's a playlist with more good stuff and a video that continues the story. So check them out and share with your friends.